producing and supplying gas to Europe. And when somebody is comparing uh, question this conundrum of first gas or first pipeline, we in Azerbaijan only smile to that because this is a chicken or egg situation. We understand that the pipeline is first and definitely we are not chicken. When we are asked for commitments for gas for the European Union, we are very down to earth. We are very pragmatic. We can commit 10 billion cubic meters at the first stage, but we can promise much more. We have other fields that can be sanctioned, sanctioned only when the pipelines connecting us with the only economically reasonable market in our vicinity, the European Union can be constructed. But when we are asked, why don't you commit? And we say that we can promise there will be more gas, this reminds the situation with the hotel breakfast, ham and eggs. If a chicken can promise eggs in the morning, for the pig, it's a commitment. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's not easy to make the decision about sanctioning a project which will take $50 billion. $25 billion we have to invest together with our co-shareholders, uh, with BP, Statoil, Qatar, and the others, into the production of Chardonnay. But another $25 billion have to be spent by Azerbaijan <coughs> to return the investments in any pipeline connecting Baku with the heart of Europe. And of course, we have to make a very serious decision which direction to Europe, to the Italian direction or to Baumgarten Baum in Austria, this pipeline has to be constructed. And of course, we appreciate the support and assistance of the United States Congress in meeting the challenges that we have in front of us in making the Chardonnay a reality. And it's the feeling with appreciation that we uh, met the decision of the House of Representatives to have a very solid, very precise language in the, their resolutions about our project. And it, our, it is our strong belief that the Senate will follow that vision and approach to the energy security of Europe. Of course, we would be very appreciative in the, if the United States administration could consider, provide more assistance and more guidance in pushing the Azerbaijani, US, European energy issues more actively, as was the case with the Clinton administration. And Azerbaijan will always stand by. A week ago, we had a very good energy dialogue in Washington, and we also appreciate the assistance of the United States in the critical energy infrastructure pr protection. <coughs> and of course, speaking about Afghanistan and our participation there. I think that several speakers mentioned that Azerbaijan was ahead of the United States in providing voting rights to women. And several speakers mentioned that Azerbaijan was the first in producing crude oil. But in Afghanistan, we also were ahead of the United States because our guys were invading Afghanistan with the Soviet troops in 1979. <laughs> and now our guys are again in Afghanistan, but with the good guys now. <laughs> so let me say in conclusion that if Azerbaijan, if Baku was the birthplace of the hydrocarbon civilization, it is this great, great nation that made the very best use of the hydrocarbons. And we will always stand together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nasiro. I think that we will all take away the point that uh, Mr. Nasiro made, that the United States needs to more proactively team up with the European Union in
promoting the Southern Corridor and related energy supply and transportation initiatives. The United States played the lead role, acting in effect on behalf of Europe at a time when Europe collectively had no policy. Now that the European Union has finally come into its own with a policy in the South Caucasus, the United States leadership has faltered, at least compared to what it was a decade ago. 